Hello, amazing kid artists. Today, I'm going to introduce you to my all-time favorite artist, and I'm going to show you a way of making art that is one of my favorite ways of making art. Let's dive in. Take a look at this painting. What do you see? In the middle of this painting, there's a person. What is the person wearing? What is the person carrying? And what do you think this person is going to go do? Before we get too much involved with talking about this, we have to learn a new vocabulary word. Landscape. If we were at the North Elementary Art Studio, I would say, copycat, and you'd say, landscape is a picture of the outdoors. Now, one way to make a landscape is by painting the outdoors in the outdoors. And there's a fancy term for it called plein air. Plein air is a French term and it means open air. And so when an artist is painting in plein air, they have taken their easel outside and they're painting what they see outside. Just like that person in the painting that we just saw, I love packing up my bags, my paints, and my easel and painting the outdoors in the outdoors. Over the years, I've taken my easel to many different sites just to paint there. I love the sun on my skin and the air blowing and just experiencing all the sights and sounds while I'm painting. It can be challenging because there's bugs and all kinds of things, but it's something that even kids can do. Kids can paint outside too. Now, the artist who most inspires me, who does plein air painting, is Vincent Van Gogh. Side note, that's not how you're supposed to pronounce his name but I'm gonna start by pronouncing that because that's how we, most of us know how to say his name. And most of us know this artist because of one very famous painting of his called Starry Night. North Elementary Kid Artists, you might recognize this painting because we have a copy of it inside of our cafeteria. Now here's the correct way to say his name and I'm gonna get a bit nerdy on you because I really love this artist. So Vincent lived in many different places during his lifetime. He lived in the countries of the Netherlands where he was born and he grew up speaking Dutch. And he lived in Belgium and England and France. And each of those places, they had a different way of saying his name because they couldn't say his Dutch name correctly. So in England, people called him Van Gogh. In France, people called him Van Gogh. Now, you may have heard of him as Van Gogh. This really frustrated Vincent when he was alive because the correct way to say his name is Vincent van Gogh. Or if you're going to try to read it out, Vincent van Gogh. In Dutch, this G right here is going to be silent. And then this sound right here comes from the back of your throat. So van Gogh. <laughs> Vincent van Gogh's paintings can be found all over the world, including Indianapolis, Indiana, which is not too far away from our Danville. A lot of his paintings are found right in the country where he was born, in the Netherlands, and in the museum called the Van Gogh Museum. You can see a whole collection of his landscape paintings, and even the equipment he used to paint with. His easels, his brushes, and even some sketchbooks. Over one summer, I got to go visit the very place where he painted in the south of France and I got to go visit the very sites where he painted, like this olive grove. 
Like him, I strapped a pack on my back with my brushes and my easel and my canvases, and I hiked to the very spots where he painted. Although he wasn't right next to me to be my teacher to learn how to paint better, I did learn a lot just by being there. The weather was so hot and so very windy. My easel fell over on me three different times and my painting fell in the dirt and bugs got stuck in the paint. I had to paint quickly so that I didn't have to stay in the sun for too long. And I had to strap my easel to hard surfaces so my easel wouldn't fall over. That made me think that maybe that could be a reason why he painted so quickly. He could paint one or two paintings in a day, and he used very windy brush strokes. So maybe that was why. He was also a big time letter writer. He would write letters to friends and family, and in those letters, he would draw sketches and tell them about his ideas for his paintings. And he would sign off by saying, love Vincent, or something like, with a good handshake to you, my friend. And in one letter to his sister-in-law, Joanna, he was telling about a painting that was helping him think about his feelings of sadness and extreme loneliness. This painting called Wheatfield Under the Thunder Clouds was helping him think about the storm clouds in a different way. He connected his feelings with the very place that he was painting. So, kid artists, like Fins and Valho, I'm going to challenge you to make a drawing of the outdoors while you're in the outdoors. That's right. You're going to be creating a plein air drawing. And maybe you might even consider connecting some of your feelings with what you're drawing. Just like Vincent, whenever he was making the painting of the field with the clouds of the storm just coming in. What you're going to do first is, well, go outside. I want you to go to your front yard or your and look for something that inspires you, something that makes your heart sing when you look at it, or just something that looks kind of interesting. Then take any kind of paper, doesn't have to be fancy, and take some kind of drawing tool, whatever will do, and draw what you see. You may want to spend some time just like looking at what you're drawing before you draw it. And you may want to just think about, it doesn't have to look exactly like it. You can just draw what it feels like to you. And when you're all done, if you want to, you can color it in with any kind of drawing tools you have at home. Then take a photo and post it to Schoology. In your post, like Vincent Vajo, consider writing a message to your friends. And maybe in your messages, you could share what you're feeling right now. Just like how Vincent was sharing with his sister-in-law that he was feeling a little bit lonely and sad, you're free and safe to share with your friends that you miss them or that you're having an excellent time at home creating all kinds of things. This is your space and you can share and write whatever you're feeling right now or you can just simply write what it was like to paint or draw outside. Then, after you post it, feel free to reply to your friends. You can do this by clicking the reply button on a friend's post and typing out something to them. Maybe it's a message saying, hey, I really missed you. I hope you're having a great time. Or, hey, your drawing's really cool to look at. Feel free to message them. It's a little bit like old-fashioned letter writing, but... It's a discussion board. Hey, it's a new era of technology. That's pretty cool. So kids, I hope you have a terrific time. I love going outdoors and feeling that sun on my face and drawing something that's really beautiful to look at. And I find it really calming. If you're a kiddo right now who is feeling a bit sad and missing their friends a lot, this is such a great activity to do because 
It helps you just take a moment and just simply be. I wish I could be there with you. And I wish I could coach you through how to draw something and make it look even better than than what it could be. But like me painting in the south of France and not being able to have Vincent Vachol standing next to me telling me how to become a better painter, I trust that just by you going out there and you being brave and sketching, just trying to sketch, that's going to be a good teacher. That you drawing out there with the sun on your cheeks and the wind blowing your paper away maybe will be a a good teacher for you. I miss you greatly, but I am so glad that we have these discussion boards because just like Vincent Valjean, how he wrote letters to his loved ones, we can post comments on this discussion board and talk to each other through here. I love you all very much, and I'll talk to you later. Happy drawing.